Hi class, Ryan here, and in this tutorial we will work through exercise 12-3 from your textbook. Three parts. First is an assembly drawing, then a detailed drawing of non-standard parts, and lastly a parts list. For part A, the assembly drawing, this is simply a single view of the object put together with no hidden lines, and we're going to choose the most common view that the object would be in. So I believe I'm going to look at this exploded view in the text and say maybe a front view would be the most commonly viewed uh, perspective of the object. So I'm in my metric template and ready to go. We'll start with that top plate. It has a diameter of 100 and a height of 13. That's the thickness. So I'll use my scroll wheel to scroll in on that cover plate. Then we have a gasket. Also a diameter of 100, and let me look here, thickness of 3 millimeters. And the last rectangle is our base chamber. I'm picking the, the corner of that previous shape, dragging down to the right, D for dimensions, 100 by 65. So all we have left to complete this part A is our bolts. Um, to draw a bolt head, we're going to start with a polygon, six sides, and hit enter. Now center, inscribed about a circle, and this, um, the diameter of a head is 1.5 times the diameter of the bolt shank, so 8 millimeter times 1.5 would be a diameter, or they want a radius, so diameter is 12, radius would be 6. So there's what the top view of the bolt looks like. So now we need to um, draw some construction lines. We'll do it just above our object here for the bolt itself. Maybe a line this way. Now the thickness of that head is 0.67 times the diameter. So 0.67 times the M8 bolt gives us 5.36. So I'm going to offset that line down 5.36. All right, now I can trim away the extra lines like so. And we could stop there. The book goes through a pretty complex process for getting the proper curves on the top here. Let's do our own little version. Maybe if we offset, let's say one point, that's too much, 0.75 of a millimeter. That looks better. And we can do an arc from here to... I'm going to turn off my ortho and my O snap. I'm just going to freehand about there to about here. And then do another one from there to. We can just use that midpoint down to here. And if it doesn't show up right, you can pick it and use that grip point to drag it down, or in this case, up, so they go where you want them to go. And then I can do a mirror command and mirror that guy over the midpoint. Hit F8, boom, to get to the other side. Now erase the extra lines that you don't need. And trim off your outer corner. And then we do need that line from there to there and from there to there. So here we have our bolt head. We don't need the top view of it anymore. Now to locate that bolt head, we do need to draw a top view. So let's do a circle from there to there. You could also plug in a radius of 50 or a diameter of 100. And the circle, it says the diameter is 75 millimeters to the center line of those holes. I don't believe that's right. If we look at the shape, it's 100 to the outside, so a radius of 50. And a radius of 30. I think that should actually read 80. So in your textbook where it says 75 millimeter diameter to the center of the holes, let's change that to 80. And I believe that will appear more like what they have drawn in the book. So I'm going to do another circle from the center point with a diameter of 80. And then I'm going to do a lot of circles with a diameter of 10. These represent, oops, diameter of 10. These represent the through holes. Just do a copy command. If you have your O snap on, you can snap from quadrant to quadrant to quadrant. If you don't have that O snap turned on, um, what was the command? 
It's not that. I had a uh, keyboard shortcut command that worked on my home computer, but for some reason it's not working here. You can go to your drafting settings by just right clicking down on your toolbar. Oops, mine's not working. Hang on. Well, anyway, you normally can right click on your toolbar to get your drafting settings to come up. For some reason, there it is snap settings. And go to your object snap, object snap, and make sure you have um, quadrant checked as well, and that'll make it possible possible to do what I did. Now, to get your other four holes, we could you know copy and rotate and do various things, but let's just do a line from center to center of these circles, and then we can go from there to the perpendicular point, and really that's where the circle goes. So I can copy that circle to that point and then I can simply mirror it over like so and then mirror both of those over the midpoint to the other side so get creative with construction lines and you'll come up with something similar to this to get those whole locations now my whole point was to be able to project down lines which I will then copy so that I can put those bolt heads in the proper locations. So just like that. Now this bolt head I can move to where it intersects the plate and the line and now I can do a CO to copy it from point to point to point. And it appears that they just barely overlap a little bit. So this bolt is in the foreground, that's in the background, so this one takes precedence. So I'll trim away and erase the portion of that bolt head that's in the background. So that completes our detail drawing, which is just this bottom portion. I'll move it out of the way. Do some M text to label it, please. We'll call this, actually it's the assembly drawing. Assembly drawing. And I'm going to scale that up three times so I can read it. Maybe stretch that a little bit wider. There we go. Center your text, and there we have our assembly drawing. That's that part put together, no hidden lines whatsoever. Part B says to do some detail drawings um, of non-standard parts. So the bolt is standard, but everything else appears to be non-standard. So we'll go from the top down. We'll start with what we already have here. We'll put this way up. This is going to be the cover plate. It has everything correct except we're missing the center threaded hole. So we'll do another circle from the center with a D inner diameter of 24. So there is our top. Now, a detail drawing, that doesn't give us quite enough information. Let's do a section view right through this guy as well. I'm going to do that with a rectangle, dimensions of 100 by 13. We want these to line up, so we'll go from midpoint to quadrant, and then move it back down out of the way. And then we just take line straight through, right? We can copy that construction line to our various points that we need to show through the section. And again, a section is like we took a saw and cut this part in two pieces. We're going to look at the inside. Those two are smooth through bores. They're correct. Here we have threads. So your favorite thing to draw, I'm sure. It's an M24 by 3 thread. That's 3 millimeters crest to crest. So we'll need a construction line that's 1.5 millimeters, or half the distance in and half the distance down, and then a line. So it just gave, me, gave myself those two construction lines for the whole purpose of getting this line drawn. Now I can mirror it to the other side and I can copy it. So, oops, I'll get both. Copy from valley to valley to valley. And this is small so I'll just copy them all down. Trim off the excess and erase the spare line and erase that line and there we have one side of our threads. Mirror to the other about the midpoint. Erase the construction line. And then you know the drill here. We will go from a peak to a valley, or a valley to a peak, and copy that line down, just like so, to show each thread. 
Now, when I get to here, I didn't have a copy point, so I'll copy from the peak to the valley on the left, and then I can trim away the excess, you know, erase that construction line. Now, to complete our section view, what's left? Oops, we need to hatch, right? That shows that we sawed this part in two. This is my ANSI 131 hatch. If you don't have that displayed, then you have to modify your settings. But that completes my detailed top view and section for what they call the cover plate. So I'm going to copy my original text up. It's always a time saver to use that copy. This will be called Detail Drawing Cover Plate. And then we may even um, go so far as to label these views. We can call this the top view. I might scale that down so it's not as obtrusive here. And then copy it down for our section view. Now, if we're doing a full blueprint, we would do a section symbol and label. But we're not going to bother for the purposes of this activity in this class. So that's what we're looking for for the cover plate. Now we're going to duplicate this for the gasket. And why not use what we've already done, right? It's the same shape almost. Erase that hole. Our inner hole, it says, is 60. So circle. Um, oh, oops, they want the center point. Let's do that again. Center point. Diameter of 60. I could also do an offset of 20 and get the same thing. It's not a section view, so I don't need any of that, but it is only three millimeters thick. So watch this. If I do a stretch command, S enter, and left drag through the center of that section view, hit spacebar, and then I drag upward or down, I can change the width. My ortho is on, so I'm going to go up and just kind of hover there and type in 10. I stretched it up 10. So there I have my no longer a section view, we're going to call that a front view of the gasket. And we probably should add in this inner line too, why not? And trim away what's left there, mirror that over since we made this a front view. And then here we will take those lines and we will change them maybe to a yellow hidden line and it's going to have to be what, like 0.1 or something to see it S scale of 0.1 to see it so there's our gasket detail drawing and our last detail drawing will be for the base so we will copy the base that we already drew up and really we'll copy the gasket down because mm, don't have enough room copy this gasket down because the gasket is the exact same top view as the base only we'll have to add a few things and we're going to call that a sectional view of the base again get creative use that text again and use this text again detail drawing and what do they call this a base chamber all right so we're real close on the top the last thing to add is the through bore at the bottom which is a circle of diameter of 24, so I'm just going to steal it from here, go from quadrant to quadrant, boom, top view is done. Section view, looks like we're about 20 millimeters thick. Why don't I just offset 20? Yeah, so that gives me a good start. Now I can trim away that guy and extend those lines up. So there is my section view through the object. This here is the back side that I'll still see in the section view. I need threads. Well, why not copy what we've done? Copy those guys from midpoint down to the bottom. And we'll need a few more threads. So let's copy those up and trim away what's extra and erase what's left. So there we show our through bore of threads. Um, everything is done except we've got to show two of these holes. And these are kind of a pain to do. So bear with me. Now, we actually, this isn't quite right because we're doing an eight millimeter bolt. So these should actually in the base be eight millimeters. So I'm gonna offset a distance of one. That takes me from a 10 down to an eight for each of these. 
just like you see here. So they've over drilled the holes on that cap so that if our tolerances are off, the cap still fits without having to fight it. So I'm going to erase those holes. Just make sure you do what I've done and convert those down to 8 millimeter on the base and erase what's left. Now we have to actually draw the threads. So let's get ourselves a construction line. We'll just do one side. And we've got to do a little bit of math. I'm going to get my calculator up. So it's a 30 millimeter bolt going through a 13 millimeter plate and a 3 millimeter gasket. So how much bolt is left to go into the base? 30 minus 13 minus 3. So we have 14 millimeters going into the base, but we over drill by two times the pitch, which would be 1.25 times 2 is 2.5. So we'll add in 2.5. So we're actually going to be a, a 16.5 millimeter deep hole. So I'm going to do a line down 14, and then I'll continue at 2.5. So there's my two construction lines. All right. And I'm, so I don't lose that. I'm going to draw a line through that way too. Now we'll offset a distance of half of the diameter, which would be four. Gives me one side. Now for the pitch, I'm sorry, for the... Um, what we overdrill here, this is called the, you know, the overdrill. We drill deeper than the fastener itself, the tap drill. That diameter is from a chart on page 526 of your book, and it says the tap drill for an 8 millimeter bolt is 6.7. Half of that would be 3.35, I think. So that's our tap drill. And then the tap drill actually goes down at a 30 degree angle um, that way. So 180 plus 30, so I'm going to do shift that. Maybe five at an angle of 210. And then extend my point down and trim that off. So that's what the, the tap drill is going to look like. My threads will stop here. So to get the threads, we were, what did I say, 1.25. Half of that is 0.625. So I'm going to offset 0.625, just like you've seen when we've done threads before, both ways. Get myself that construction line to draw my starting point. Erase the construction line. Mirror that guy over itself. Make sure F8 is on. And then do some copying, right? Copy it down, 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 just like so. All right and trim away what's left. Okay, I believe that looks right. I'm going to erase this and then mirror all of that over to the other side using that as my midpoint, just like so. And erase that, erase that, erase that. Now we need to draw on the threads themselves, go from valley to peak. And I don't know which way you would draw to make it a right hand or left hand thread. I haven't thought deep enough into it, but I'm sure I'm maybe I'm making this a left hand thread inadvertently. But if I took a look at a bolt, then it would make sense which pitch would be which, I suppose. And we'll go just like this. If you have too much, just erase that extra off. Actually, I'm going to erase that totally off and just connect the dots here because that's where picture whoever is doing the tooling on this, they're going to run a tap, which is hardened steel, into this pre-drilled hole to cut out the threads, and it's going to stop just like that. So there's the inner. Mirror it to the other side. And that's really the most complex part about this whole section view was doing the tap hole and then the actual threads. So to recap... We have a 8 millimeter diameter, but then we step down. Our actual tap diameter is 6.7. Our tap distance is, um, what I say, 2 P's. So in this case, it was 2.5 millimeters deeper, and that's a 33 or a 30 degree angle. And that's how we come up with this whole view. Let's wrap up our section B with some hatching. Oh, don't do that. Erase that. I got trigger happy. So we'll hatch here and hatch here. 
And there we have our section view and our top view, and I believe they look complete. And, you know, we're not doing a presentation drawing, so it's fine if you have them presented just like this for the cover plate, the gasket, and the base, base chamber, and then your assembly drawing. The last thing, Part C, is a parts list. We'll do that quickly here off to the side. Just do M text. Give yourself a nice big text box. And we're going to call this, I'm going to do Control U so it's underlined, Material List. Control U again to turn it off. But I'm going to just say I've got eight. And I, if it does the automatic indentation, hit Control Z. You don't want that because it'll start a count, try, count from eight to nine to ten, and that'll mess you up. So we have eight M8 by 1.25 by 30 bolts. Then I'm going to do another, not two, I've got one. And if it indents, it controls the cover plate. I'm going to have one, control Z, gasket. And I'm going to have one, control Z, base chamber. Okay, scale that up maybe by a factor of three so we can read it. Do a rectangle as a border. And you have completed one of the harder assignments so far in this class. If you have questions, please let me know. I appreciate your time. I know we've gone over 20 minutes. Good luck to you.